Hello, we are going to look at the atypia of undetermined significance or AUS category in thyroid FNAs and this is according to the Bethesda system for reporting thyroid cytopathology, the 2023 or third edition. Before we go into detail on AUS, let's have a very quick overview of the Bethesda system. So this is the third edition and there are six categories, non-diagnostic, B9, AUS, which is subdivided into AUS nuclear atypia, as well as AUS other, and within these there are further subcategories. So we will look at this later on. And then follicular neoplasm, suspicious for malignancy, and finally malignant. And we will be focusing here on the AUS category. So AUS, atypia of undetermined significance, means Findings are not those of a follicular neoplasm or suspicious for malignancy, and they are also not those of a definite benign nodule. Therefore, it is an indeterminate category. In the first and second editions of the Bethesda system, this atypical category actually was called AUS, atypia of undetermined significance of FLUS, follicular lesion of undetermined significance. In the third Bethesda system edition, the term FLUS has been dropped and we have this category which has been unified into AUS only or atypia of undetermined significance and this is to promote clarity and consistency. This should be a last resort and it should be used sparingly. So this category is important to understand that when there is AUS with nuclear atypia, the risk of malignancy has been shown to be higher and therefore it is important to indicate whether there is nuclear atypia or is it just AUS other, meaning that the findings are those of other types of atypia. So under the nuclear atypia section, we have focal nuclear atypia, extensive but mild nuclear atypia, atypical cyst lining cells, atypical histiocytoid cells, and where there is both nuclear and architectural atypia. We will look at this in more detail soon. In the AUS other category, there is just the presence of architectural atypia without accompanying nuclear atypia, oncocytic atypia, and there is a separate video describing an approach to oncocytic lesions in the thyroid gland, atypia NOS, and atypical lymphoid cells. Let's start by looking at AUS with nuclear atypia. Among these scenarios, firstly, we have the presence of focal nuclear atypia, and this means that there are cells which exhibit enlarged nuclei with pale chromatin and irregular nuclear contours, so they sort of raise the possibility to make you think of papillary thyroid carcinoma, but there are insufficient cells, so posicellular or cellular, but just very rare cells with nuclear atypia insufficient for us to call it suspicious for PTC. The risk of malignancy here is actually fairly high, it's about 44%. And then there is extensive but mild nuclear atypia, meaning that most of the cells do show a degree of atypia, but it is only in the form of mild enlargement of the nuclei, slight pallor of the chromatin, and mild irregularity. And quite often, these lesions turn out on histology to be NIFTPs or follicular variant PTCs. So again, there is quite a significant risk of malignancy. And then we have atypical cyst lining cells, where the nuclei can show enlargement, nuclear grooves, prominent nucleoli, elongation. And often one of the good clues is that the cytoplasm is kind of pulled out and sometimes tapering. And there may even be sometimes rare pseudo-inclusions, and these are reactive changes and are usually non-neoplastic. We also have histiocytoid cells, where we have small clusters of cells with mildly enlarged round nuclei, but they have this glassy cytoplasm, or they have many cytoplasmic vacuoles, and I'll show you some examples very soon. And this is also inclusive of cases with both nuclear and architectural atypia. Here is an example of a picture of these so-called histiocytoid cells where the cytoplasm is quite bubbly and the cells are very cohesive, which is not usually how histiocytes are seen. They are usually more dispersed. And 
Here again, we have the atypical histiocytoid cells, the air dried smears. This is just to compare with a cluster of uh, cells from a known confirmed PTC. And usually in cystic PTC, uh, we often see these types of clusters where the cells have bubbly cytoplasm. So this picture here is an example of AUS, histiocytoid cells. And now let's move on to AUS other. So we have architectural atypia where there are few cells and almost all of them are arranged in either crowded three-dimensional groups or microfollicular groups, but there is some scanned colloid in the background. So overall scanned cellularity, but quite atypical architecture. The other scenario is where there is actually more cellularity, but we have maybe around half or slightly more than half of the cell population showing architectural atypia. If we have a higher percentage, almost all the cell population showing architectural atypia, that would then bump this up into the follicular neoplasm category. But here, if we have roughly half or just about two thirds, then it will still fall into the AUS, other architectural atypia category. We also have oncocytic atypia, and there will be a separate video describing uh, an approach to oncocytic lesions in the thyroid gland. And again, there are some possible scenarios. Firstly, if the smears are hypocellular, but almost exclusively composed of oncocytes and with very little background colloid. And secondly, if there is a higher degree of cellularity, but there are clinically benign features, such as features that are suggestive of Hashimoto thyroiditis or multinodular goiter with multiple nodules, and there are no lymphocytes, or there are multiple nodules with features that suggest oncocytic neoplasm. So basically, if the clinical picture is that of benignity, then this can go into the oncocytic atypia category. We also have atypia NOS, not otherwise specified, where there is a minor population of cells with some degree of nuclear atypia, but this is kind of like a not very specific nuclear atypia, not the PTC type of atypia with chromatin pallor or grooves, but rather enlargement. The nuclei may actually sometimes be a little bit hyperchromatic. And this kind of change, as you can see here on the right, as well as this one below, this kind of change is often seen in patients with Graves' disease who are treated with pharmaceutical agents, carbimazole or radioactive iodine. So if we do have that history, then this usually will be diagnosed as a benign nodule. However, if the history is not forthcoming, then this will fall into atypia other, atypia NOS. If there are saboma bodies without nuclear features of papillary thyroid carcinoma. This also goes into atypia NOS. And any other types of atypia that are not covered here. And finally, if there are atypical lymphoid cells, perhaps there is a population that far exceeds the follicular cells, or maybe there is a degree of monotony in the lymphocytes, then this would be atypical lymphoid cells. So we have AUS, which is subclassified into AUS with nuclear atypia and AUS other. In terms of the risk of malignancy, it's actually significantly higher in AUS with nuclear atypia. You can see here one third of cases, almost half of cases in some instances turn out to be malignant. And usually it is some variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma, as opposed to AUS other, where the risk of malignancy has been significantly lower. For management, usually it is repeat FNA, and in these cases, a percentage of them will be AUS again on repeat FNA, after which excision or lobectomy may be recommended. And these cases can also benefit from molecular testing where a negative result, meaning that a result that points to the absence of malignancy, usually has a very high negative predictive value. And this means that these patients have a very low risk of malignancy and therefore they can be managed conservatively and followed up. And before I end, I would like to invite you to check out PathWeb. This is our free online pathology resource, and we have a virtual pathology museum with more than 1,000 fully annotated interactive virtual pathology specimens such as this one. Registration is completely free. The registration link is in the video description. Thank you.